Okay, welcome to the home workshop of Pat Heppert, uh, home of many ice boats and ice boat parts. Uh, you may recognize my boats on the lake, uh, several Skeeters and Renegades, all with the name Drifter. Uh, the most recent one is a C-Class front cockpit Skeeter named Drifter, the, the uh, green boat. And today in the workshop what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting foam cores for a new 12-inch uh, wide carbon foam mast. Uh, all this technology is basically borrowed from the radio-controlled airplane um, business and basically it's just a kind of their standard hot wire uh, foam cutter. Um, so what this consists of is a power supply and this one's uh, kind of fancy. It'll do constant current or constant voltage uh, but basically it'll do up to 30 volts or 30 or 10 amps uh, which is plenty sufficient. Uh, we'll be cutting with about 5 amps or so. Um, then you see the heart of the operation is this is this bow and that's simply just a piece of oak a couple tubes in the end and across the bottom is a nichrome wire which is our heating wire uh, it's 25 thousandths just nichrome bought from McMaster car and you can see the alligator, alligator clips hooked up to the power supply um, to tension the bow there's a spring on the top and the nice thing about the using the spring is it'll compensate for uh, uh, as, the, as the wire heats up and, and expands. Uh, the spring will compensate for that and you can very easily measure the tension. On a 25 thousandths wire we're running about 20 to 25 pounds of tension. Um, also you'll see that the entire bow is suspended by rubber bands with a fishing line that goes all the way to the ceiling. And the reason for the rubber bands is just so that both ends of the boat bow can kind of float independently. And then you see the bow is being pulled along um, by this mechanism and how this works is basically there's fishing line hooked up to the hooked up to the hot wire and that comes across pulleys and as the bow travels the lever moves up and down. Um, so the advantage of this is that uh, both ends of the, of the uh, bow are connected to the same spot on the lever which means that both ends of the bow move exactly the same amount. And then you'll see it's also marked, so if we're doing a tapered section like at the top of the mast, you just set it to whatever percentage of full cord you want, and, uh, and it's good to go. Uh, here's a couple of templates. Uh, what we're building is a 12-inch foam mast. Um, so these templates are cutting out a, a 9 and 3 quarter inch foam piece. There's about 2 and a quarter on the on the trailing edge that ends up being wood and you see a top cutting template and a bottom cutting template and we always cut the bottom for it first to avoid the kerf uh, of the wire from influencing the airfoil and then we cut the top and the combination of the two um, results in that perfect NACA profile uh, you can see at the front it's just a little bit sharp right there uh, which basically we have no choice but to trim that off, uh, sand it uh, to round. Uh, there's kind of limits on what you should really do with the hot wire cutter. And then on the back you'll see a mark at one inch and that's basically the end of the foam. Uh, we just make the templates an inch longer um, just to have somewhere to go with the wire. And then you'll see the edges of the templates are uh, they're not only uh, sanded but they're polished and that's important for the wire to run smoothly. Uh, these templates are 50 thousandths thick, maybe 40 thousandths thick aluminum. Important not to be too thick because that'll uh, actually slow the wire down because on the ends it's cooling against the aluminum. Um, so that's the templates and we'll go ahead and set it up. Okay, so now we're ready to cut. Um, you see uh, clamped in the jig is a piece of foam. This is 3 inch thick. It is extruded polystyrene XPS foam but it's a Dow High Load 60, which is designed for concrete applications for uh, high loads under highways and, and uh, airport runways and things like that. Um, so this is not your standard foam that you buy at Home Depot. Um, so it's 60 PSI compressive strength. Um, you see the um, aluminum templates that are secured on the end. And that's just with uh, some sharpened finishing nails into the foam. Uh, power supply is set at 4.5 amps and the amount of weight I've got pulling it is about 9 to 10 ounces right now. So the first step 
as we'll get the bow ready to go. Um, you do have to be careful with such a roundy uh, template. On the beginning of the cut it wants to cut too fast and then at the end of the cut it wants to cut too slow. So you got to kind of support it a little bit, just a little bit to take some of the, some of the load off. That doesn't take very long to heat up. Turn on the power supply and it's pretty much ready to cut. So here we go. So it just follows along the template and cuts nice and smoothly and accurately. The key is to get the right combination of uh, cutting power or amperage and wire tension and the amount of weight pulling the wire. Uh, we don't want it to bow too much as it's going through there, otherwise it distorts. Each one of these sections is 48 inches long, so to make a 20 foot sea skeeter mast, uh, we've got five of these sections with the last one being tapered. So I'm starting to add just a little bit of weight to the, to the lever to increase the pulling force right at the end. And when it comes out it'll just to go against the stop. And that's it for the bottom cut. I'm going to turn off the power supply. Uh, the wire cools in just a matter of seconds. We'll return the wire to where it came from. And now we'll take the templates off the bottom and put them put the top templates on. So now we've got the bottom templates uh, secured to the foam and we'll be cutting the, uh, the top surface of the wing and this one's just to the opposite of the bottom where it wants to uh, start really slowly so it needs more, uh, more cutting force at the beginning uh, so it's just the opposite of the opposite of the bottom one so we'll take our bow put it on the template and you'll notice it doesn't move on its own because it's trying to ride up that 45 degree ramp um, so we can go ahead and Turn on the power supply. We're at 4.5 amps and we'll gently just start adding a little load to help it start the cut. You'll also see I've got a couple of weights sitting on top. These are just two uh, actually DN runner blanks and then another piece of uh, square steel. Just need to hold it flat while all this is occurring. I'm not an expert in this, so we're still kind of playing around with it. It's not perfect, so I'm sure there's a few imperfections that will have to be sanded out. Okay, and the wire is through. Turn the power supply off. stuck there and let's see what it looks like. So we can take all of our weights off. So this is just a start to the mast. It's obviously a lot more to go. Again the back two inches is, is made out of wood and then it's got aluminum sail track and an aluminum uh, tube going down the right before the trailing edge for the halyard to ride up and then just a ton of carbon fiber 
So let's see what we did here. So the top surface looks good. Nice and smooth. Just a few little hairs to sand off. The bottom, I can guarantee we got a few lines in it. And the bottom surface looks like right near the trailing edge, we got a little bit of a line to sand off. But overall, can't complain. It's the start of a mast and the start of the next ice boating season. So this is uh, Pat Heppert on Bell Plain, Minnesota, signing out for the day. And hopefully the 12-inch foam carbon mast will be on the ice this winter. Think ice.